The Small Business Show, episode 352 for Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021. Folks, and welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, where we are small businessing every single week. Sponsors for this episode include Shopify.com slash SBS. We we know about this, right? You get your 14-day trial and full access to test it all out. And a new sponsor, the David versus Goliath podcast, dedicated to helping small businesses compete against their large competitors. So we will talk more about like both that. of those. Same. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Uh, yeah. We'll talk more about those in uh, in a little bit. But for now, yeah, here in Durham, New Hampshire, as usual, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. Yeah, That's man. Good. I'm looking forward to learning more about that. Uh, both those sponsors. I yeah. Shopify and I love taking on the big guys. So that's great. I think so. Good, I think good so. Good stuff. Thinking of big guys, we're, we were going to talk about some banking uh, before uh, we roll into our meteor topic. Right? Yeah. And our, our meteor topic today is, <laughs> I, I think it'll be meteor. I don't, you know, we haven't done the banking one yet. So the, the, yeah, that's this, true. You don't know. You don't know. <laughs> Listeners decide. That's right. You get to decide. Yeah. But the uh, meteor topic is inflation and dealing with that too. Right. So, yeah. yeah. But, um, but yeah, banking. So we had a question about how should I go about choosing a bank for my small business or what bank should I choose for my small business? And I have a lot of feelings on this, and I don't know that any of them are concrete. In fact, I think most of my feelings are conflicting on this. Huh, yeah. I, Mine are all anecdotal based on my experiences. Well, and so <laughs> same, same. I, I mean, I, I, I worked for a bank for a long time. I didn't work in the branch, but I worked for Citibank for a while. So I, I definitely know what it was like 20 plus years ago working behind the scenes at a very, very large bank. And it's like any other very, very large company. There's lots of red tape and things move slowly and all of that, but they do have great resources at their disposal and, and they can do things. And, and in the branches, the, the, the managers and the tellers really are equipped at least back then were, and, and, and still are equipped to, to give you personalized experience or personalized help and all that stuff. So right. I'm not necessarily against using a big bank for your small business. Although when I was uh, going to the score coaching and everything, and they saw that I was with bank of America, which is where uh, I've had accounts for several of our businesses for a while now, for many, many years, they like one of the first things they said was get away from the big banks, get yourself, find a, not a, not a, a single branch bank, but find a local bank, local bank. You, yeah. you know, that has some, has, has a, you know, some, a track record, a, you know, five plus years in business, that sort of thing. Right. You know, and, and you'll get better service from them. You'll get more personalized attention from them, which as a small business owner can be important. You need to be able to get, the attention of your bank and banker so that yeah. when you need, when you're in that weird scenario where the, the numbers and the procedures say, no, they can say yes. Right. They can take a look at it on a more human scale. Yeah, and, sure. But I've had that with the big banks too. So I, I didn't move to be perfectly honest I, with those businesses. Well, uh, so, yeah, I, you know, I, yeah. It, my take on it is uh, a couple different things. You, you're right. This, Big, massive banks are, I, I'm not a huge fan of banks I, I, anyway. And the problem with, with bankers is often you, right when you get somebody set and you've taught them all about your business and everything, they get transferred, they, they leave a job, yeah. they leave. And, you know, so to always remember with bigger banks or even smaller banks, there's a relationship person, right? That recruits you and kind of talks and schmoozes you, takes you to lunch, uh, concerts, golf, whatever. And then there's this kind of hidden committee in the background that uh, now this person is supposed to be your champion, your relationship person, but ultimately they may not be the decision maker. Right. Um, so that, that's a great reason for smaller banks. I, 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 I bank with B of A as well. However, the only reason, uh, and, and I get great service, but it's not just because of my 
business relationship, it's because I have all my personal investments with Merrill, uh, right. used to be Merrill Lynch. They just call it Merrill now. So when you, uh, you, you know, you get a little different attention. If I have a problem with B of A, I don't call B of A. I don't call an 800 number. I call my, my financial, you know, reps office and they have a relationship liaison there and they get things done quickly. But for many, many, many years, I didn't have anything like that. So I did just that, you know, smaller banks. I loved once more online banking became available. Yeah. Banks like, didn't we just have a sponsor? Nova, Nova. Yeah. We had Novo, uh, like as sponsor Novo. recently. Yep. And, and ally bank is great. Uh, uh, synchrony bank is great. You know, synchrony is, is the old, GMAC, I believe. Oh, um, I didn't know. I, oh, that makes perfect sense. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah and, okay. and Ally yeah. is another one of those big, uh, you know, finance vehicles that, yeah. that went out on their own. Those banks are terrific. And I have, I uh, still have accounts with both of those because they offer all kinds of other flexibility. And if you're savvy about online stuff, it can really benefit from you. But you're not going to have that one to one relationship manager. But for certain things, you don't need it. Um, so I, I, I don't know if that is helpful or not. I, I do love having a local bank be your kind of everyday small business banker. I think that's really good. Yeah. I, I mean, I got the, you know, when it was explained to me that way by the score folks, it was like, okay, I, I get what you're saying. I get why you're saying it. You know, yeah. you might, you might have a better chance of, like you said, getting to know sort of everyone at the bank and, and not just the one person with the, it can help. Yep. It can help. Yeah. I, I I think honestly, to me, the most important thing when starting a new business, especially when you don't know if it's going to, you know, succeed or fail, because let's face it, they often do the latter, not the former, uh, is to find a, a bank that charges no monthly fees for yeah, you sure. know your checking account like that that's a great place to start with with yeah. a bank or or if it's just a side hustle even if it's a, like for what we do here these days this business you and I have is effectively a side hustle for you and me right yeah. i mean I, uh -huh. I would never have called it that because well, everything i have yeah. is a side hustle <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> you know right. but but i mean it, it it is right it's not the primary thing that you or i do and so when we um, we closed our bank account for a while with this, and we've used this particular entity for over a decade for different things. We had our deals on the website and we had yeah. other stuff, mm -hmm. but we, we closed our bank account. And then when we sort of kicked up the podcast and was like, well, we, we got to do something with this cash that, you know, we're getting yeah. from our sponsors and things like that. Like, where are we going to put that? PayPal's not going to cut it. Because yes. PayPal is a great thing, but it's not, it's not a bank a bank in the way that you need a bank sometimes. And so it's like, we need a bank. It's like, all right, well, let me look around and find one that has no fees. And so I, I did. And we've been using Citizens for, for this business. And it's been fine. You know, I know the people there. They have changed three times since yeah. we opened this account. I opened another one for another business basically at the same time. And uh and, you know, and they, and, and that business runs a ton of money through it and it, you know, they still are they change it, you know, they change our primary contact all the time, but they've been fine, you, you yeah, know, sure. it, yeah. it, but you need to remember, like you will get what you pay for. So an account that has no fees, no monthly fees might not quite have all the services that you want. Like with this other business we now it's grown. We do a lot of uh, wire transfers and things like that just to, that, that's part of kind that's of our, a, our, those are our requirements, our right? flow. So, it's a different yeah. requirement. Yep. Yep. And it's been like, Oh man, maybe we should move to a different bank. Like getting online access to do wire transfers at, at citizens was re required Herculean efforts. Oh, yeah, it was like, crazy. this is yeah. crazy. Like you want me to drive 10 minutes every time I want to do a wire transfer. There's no yeah. freaking way. And they're like, well, we do have this other program, sir. And it's like, okay, well now I'm spending 150 bucks a month, you know, like, okay, cool. <laughs> that, that's it. Yeah, no, I agree. And I, I guess, um, I want banks, uh, to find the bank that gives you the most, but also stays out of your hair, uh, the, the, uh, the most, you know, it, the least amount of requirements, uh, I think is important. And I also think it's important that you have 
long-term discussions just about this kind of stuff uh, you're talking about. Oh, we're going to eventually need to do yeah. lots of wire transfers or, hey, I'm and we going didn't know to, that out of the you know, gate with this other business. Sure. It just, you know, it's like things evolve. We, yes, we, do we evolve. started doing one thing. We pivoted to doing another. And it was like, oh, OK, this is now our needs are different. And yeah. so, yeah, don't be afraid to change banks either and uh, and let that evolve with you. Like like this free checking was a great thing to get started. And then it turns out that that costs us way more than it would at another bank that doesn't have free checking. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's right. Yep. And, and I would say, you know, instead of just walking into the bank or going online and opening an accounts, if you really want this connection in a local business banker, what? Well, Call and and or go by and ask to speak to their business development department. Have someone pitch why you should bank with them. Yes, you know, flip the relationship on its head. Remember, you're the customer. You're not trying to impress the bank. The bank should be trying to impress you. Always remember that. It sometimes it may seem like the opposite when they're requiring you to give more paperwork and you know subjugate your your investment to loans you have and all this can personally guarantee. But always. Remember to keep that relationship. I'm the customer. You're supposed to do what I need. I like that. That is a, it is good to remind yourself of that regularly because it, they will require you. You know, there's all this KYC oh, stuff yeah. the know your customer requirements and the bank has to ask some very like probing questions about you and anyone else who has a, a controlling interest in your business. Really not not just controlling anybody that owns 25% or more, I think of, sure. of the business has to go through this KYC stuff, meaning they need your tax ID number. And it's the anti-terrorism, anti-money laundering stuff that's now in yeah. place that regulation wise, the banks don't have any choice about this. And they're going to ask to see your, you know, uh, articles of organization and your, uh, you know, agreements that you have in the company. They're, they're going to want to see all this stuff in the past. That wasn't the case. I mean, I've got, no. I have a Accounts open like our account that we have for Backbeat Media. I, I don't, I don't know that they have anything on file for us. To be perfectly honest, yeah, like, times have changed. Yeah, times have changed. That's the thing. Yeah. Right? That was that yeah. that account was open twenty years ago. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah. and and I think that um, you always also remember that everything is a negotiation. You know, uh, I recall one of our business bankers telling me, "Look, the bank wants a two percent." relationship with you, meaning we want to make 2% off of everything you do. So keep that in mind when they're offering you lines of credit, when they're, when you're talking about maybe bringing more business to them, when you're referring things, everything is open to negotiation and you should have that back and forth, you know, and, and they do want to know a lot of information, but it is important if you have a good relationship with your business banker is to keep them posted how things are going, especially uh, if, uh, things are doing, you know, good in your business. That's the time to set up lines of credit yes. to take out term loans. If you need things, don't go to them when you need the money. Cause then that relationship where they uh, strangely start treating it like, you know, you're having to prove yourself to them that don't do that. Don't do that. Avoid it. No. And, and, yeah. you know, I would say when you're in that spot where, even if, you know, you're not dealing with it, I am where, you know, you need wire transfers and your bank makes that difficult or there's a friction point with it or whatever. When you get to that point where you are opening, a, you know, opening those lines of credit, when you have a little bit of financial strength to your business and it doesn't it's you don't have to be moving hundreds or even tens of thousands of dollars through just something consistent where you feel comfortable about your business. I would say at that point is a great time to open an account with a second bank. Oh yeah, that's good. Right. And, and make <laughs> yeah. sure that you can do all of the things that you need to do with your bank with this second one. Right. And, and if you can make it so that you're not paying fees, okay, great. And maybe that requires a minimum balance. You can just, you know, put some of your, your sort of war chest cash over there or something like that, or, uh, you know, get it all set. All of the things that you have online, like your PayPal account, if you use that for your business or other accounts that you use set up ahead of time ways to transfer funds to both of your bank accounts now, right? That the, the old one, you probably already have that, that, that could still be your main one. But when you set up this new one, go and sort of integrate it with everything so that if something happens and that first account is one you decide to close, or for some reason, the bank decides to close it, you have this second one ready to roll. You're good to go. Everything's in place. 
everything's good, and you stayed in touch with your banker there so that there's no great surprise. That gives you a whole lot more leverage yeah, when you are great. talking to your bank, either one great of them, advice. right? Because now it's like, oh, you don't want to give me this. No, it's no problem. I, I, I'm going to call, you know, plan B. You were plan A, and that's why I called you first, but this is obviously not something that works for you. No problem. I'll go to plan B. I, that's a great way to negotiate, I think. <laughs> So, yeah. Well, yeah. you, you, again, it comes back to that you want to be negotiating from a, a position of strength and yeah. if they're not the only resource for you and they shouldn't be that, that it's good for them to know that as well. That's it. They yeah. need to earn your business. Don't forget that all because the time. Even though, yeah. yeah. Even though you're maybe small and maybe you're struggling or whatever it is, it, that's not going to, it's not going to be that way forever. And, you know, uh, they can earn your business all different kinds of ways. You know, if you're going to buy a house or refinance your house, maybe, you know, maybe they can offer you a, a mortgage and you can get a discount on your mortgage because of your banking relationship. You know, I, there's all kinds of ways to, to maximize that stuff. I did that last year was, yeah. I mean, we didn't wind up refinancing for, for different reasons, but we had one bank that was giving us the runaround. And finally I called my corporate contact at the bank of America cool. and was like, Hey, if we wind up moving this to you, can you make it happen? They're like, absolutely. Like there yeah. was no question. That's great. It's like, right. Yeah. I should have done this in the first place. He's like, yeah, that's fine. It's like, when you're ready, you give me a call. We're good. So yeah, that's good stuff, man. So yeah. I mean, if you have banking tips, you'd like us to talk about feedback at businessshow.co. Let absolutely. us know yeah. what you think. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, we have, before we uh, talk at next topic, we have a new sponsors page up too at uh, businessshow.co forward slash sponsors that you should go take a look at and see all the cool people that have sponsored us. Uh, and we really do have an A to Z from Amazon to Zapier, which I thought was cool. That is pretty uh, cool. Yeah, yeah, I like so that. Yeah, yeah, they're all they're all up there, and the logos are there, and um, you can click in, and a lot of the offers that you know I thought may had expired are are still active. I noticed on a bunch of them, discounts, and uh, yeah, just because they're not active sponsors of ours doesn't mean yeah. that their offers are not active for you to take advantage of. Yeah, so go ahead. We cool. we made all the URLs clickable so that you can take advantage of the you know the special deals and all that good stuff. So. And we really thank all those sponsors for. Uh, keeping us through the 352nd episode. That's right. That's cool. Man. Yeah. Good hey, stuff. speaking of sponsors, I would love to talk about our two sponsors for this episode now. Let's do it. All right. Hey, look, you know, almost every small business faces competition from much larger companies in their industry, right? That's true for all of us. In order to compete against them and win, we small business owners and entrepreneurs need to arm ourselves with the right tools and resources, and that's why we are loving this and recommending you start listening to the David versus Goliath podcast. In each episode, host Adam DeGrade covers the five smooth stones that every business needs to slay Goliath in their industry. We were just talking about podcasts for small businesses, and now we've got another one. Here we are, because the David versus Goliath podcast is dedicated to helping small businesses leverage technology to compete and win against large competitors. And it's so clear that Adam has this passion for inspiring, educating, and activating small business owners with episodes covering emerging industry trends top strategies in digital marketing, constructive management techniques, and more. This show is packed with everything you need to succeed with guest interviews, sales role playing, and actionable tips that you can apply directly to your business today. We're telling you, if you're a small business owner or entrepreneur, and you must be if you're listening here, the David vs. Goliath podcast is a must listen. So go search for David vs. Goliath podcast on YouTube, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And our thanks to David vs. Goliath for sponsoring this episode. You know what that sound is. We love that sound. It's the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business because Shopify is designed for anyone to sell anywhere, giving entrepreneurs like you and me the resources once reserved for those big businesses, customized for our needs, with a great-looking online store that brings ideas to life and gives us all the tools to manage our day-to-day -day and drive sales. Making your idea real opens up endless possibilities. We all know that. It's a journey, but that's the beauty of entrepreneurship. Look, we've used Shopify here. It... <laughs> It is so much easier 
to let the experts in one thing do the thing they're good at so that you can do the thing you're good at. And unless your business is making shopping carts and e-commerce engines, you don't want to have to do that for yourself. You want to use Shopify. That's how we started using it, and that's why it works. Shopify powers over 1.7 million entrepreneurs from first sale to full scale. Every 28 seconds, a small business owner makes their first sale on Shopify. So to get started, go to shopify.com slash SBS, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of business features. Start selling on Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash SBS right now. Shopify.com slash SBS. And our thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. All right. So... Inflation, uh, Shannon, huh? Oh, yeah. Yes. Let's talk about inflation. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Prices are up, right? All over it. 5.4% inflation uh, last quarter, the highest in over 13 years, right? So uh, we did a show last week on supply chain and how that would be impacting your business. And I also want to talk about uh, inflation and some tactics to uh, offset how that is probably squeezing your bottom line a bit. Sound good? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I have a lot to learn here. I, I, I'm, oh, okay. well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm aware of inflation, but, yeah. and I, but I don't really think about it when I'm making plans for my business and that's yeah, probably you're missing out there. Yeah. Well, I mean, now, you know, everything, you know, shipping prices are up, sure. uh, packaging costs are up, inventory costs are up, fuel prices up, er, you know, all kinds of stuff. And, your customers are being impacted from everything from they go to the grocery store to, you know, buying clothes. I mean, groceries, I think were up uh, even more than 5.4%, something like 7%. Um, so it's, it's, it, it's important to be aware of it. And the, so talking about how to manage these, you know, inflation issues, the first thing, and we talked about this a bit with supply chain, but it, the quality of your data for your business is even more important now, not just the sales and revenue, but your true cost of goods. Like if you're shipping, uh, you know, items from overseas, right? It, w shipping container costs have gone up from like $1,800 per container to almost $8,000 per it's container. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. So, you know, tracking that to be sure that those uh, expenses are true and, you know, real hitting your, hitting your books so you can see how the impact is, uh, your labor costs, right? Trying to get people to come back to work might have increased a bit. Um, and I would say, you don't wait till the end of the month. I mean, if, if you're in the middle of it and looking at how inflation is happening and you're trying to track everything, you really need to do a weekly dive it, into at least whatever data you've captured yeah. briefly. And then at the end of the month, you can dig into it deeper. But uh, you, you want to keep abreast of what's what's happening and what expenses are you seeing increase so you can take some of the other steps that I'm going to talk about next. Okay. That makes okay. sense. Yeah. No, yeah. it makes sense. So, yeah. Some a lot of similarities in the supply chain thing. One of the most important things with the inflation and your your cost structure and pricing is to communicate with your customers. Be very transparent. Everybody knows what's going on. Everybody sees it in the news. Uh, you can you know talk about it in your newsletter about things you're doing to try to keep your pricing uh, stable. Uh, you know how things are impacting. Asking for input from your customers. Just having it as part of your normal dialogue because you may have to, at some point, raise your prices. And, and you know, if you are easing people into this, it, it's going to be a little bit easier. You know, um, we try to avoid having to raise prices, but at some point you may have to. So you, you, know, how, you may... How often... This is interesting to me. So obviously you're... Um, when you're dealing B to C, right? Like, right. right where, so you, you know, you're selling directly to the consumer. It makes a lot of sense to have regular communication with those people, right? Because they, they That's need right. to remember to come back and buy from you. And you almost have to, you are forced to do that in some automated or semi automated way. You, you need some kind of megaphone because chances are you don't have, you have more customers than you could personally reach out to on a regular basis. Right. 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 So you hopefully, need, yeah. hopefully you're right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Yes. So yes. you need to go and do this 
with a mailing list or some other way that that you've put into place to 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 reach your customers and and in including inflation as one of the topics that you talk about there especially especially preemptively yep. very very smart what are your thoughts on how to do this if you are a B2B company right like like do you would you do a mailing list for uh, you know, for your customers in that regard. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Yeah. And I think those people are even more aware of it, right? Cause it's happening sure. yeah. uh, in their own business as well. So, you know, you, you can either offer advice, right? Add value, mm. uh, even just linking to articles that talk about how to manage inflation pressures in your business. You know, that could be it. You could be just sub, you know, uh, a good persuasion technique to be educating your uh, B2B customers, your business customers about things like this, right? Yeah. Uh, talking about it and saying, hey, we're all grappling with this. Here's a great article from the whoever, the Harvard Business Review about ways to help offset uh, inflation costs and ways to manage it. So, you know, um, you, you're getting it f uh, front of mind and you're prepping to, you know, if you have to take some actions that they're going to be like, oh yeah, we're aware of this too. We know how it is you know, we're going to have to do, you know, make these adjustments as well. Right. Yeah. No, that yeah. makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And you know, the thing, uh, I, we always talk about here, not getting caught in that price trap, right? This race to the bottom, lowest price. That's just a bad business to be in or bad business model, unless you're just massive. So I, I come back and think about differentiation. How are you different than these other people that, you know, if you raise your price, uh, on whatever, a product or a service, is it really going to impact where a customer is just going to walk away like that? Well, you know, you got to talk to, and again, it's about educating your customers, talking sure. about your reliability, your warranty, whatever it is. But, you know, why are we different and why do we deserve your loyalty, right? Uh, it's It's conditioning over time and customers going, yeah, these guys are great. They stood behind this or they came out and fixed this at, you know, the middle of the night, didn't, you know, they showed up when they said they were going to show up. Those are all things that if you talk about them in your regular communication with your customers, it intrinsically builds value. So when they go, oh, yeah, I understand they had to raise your price a little bit because everything's gotten more expensive. Right. It's much better than just dropping it on the, oh, everything's going up when or getting the bill and having it, uh, you know, just randomly show up. Wait, Communication you, you is don't, really important. You don't think people like it when you treat them like like the phone companies or the cable companies do where, where no. they, you have the price and then there's this random positive number that's added to the total that yeah. they assign to some you know fee or or surcharge or something that that's not right. we, we don't want that no that's your small business superpower you that can is, you can true. get yourself way beyond that that's why everybody hates the phone company and the big cable companies and this kind of thing you know uh, it, it's, it, you were, it's an opportunity actually to connect with your customers on an entirely different level. Oh, well, I agree. I, and I love thinking about that as your small business superpower, because it yeah. really is right. The fact sure. that, that you are a human and you are treating other people like humans, that is a small business superpower. And you can tell them, Oh, you have questions. Give me a call. Or yeah. talk to one or, you know, whatever, give us a call. We'll talk to you about it. Tell you what's going on. I we'll mean, you talk know, that, to you. That, yeah. It's not a secret. And I've often been in the position where I've been, oh, well, no, I don't want to bring that up. And it, but I found that, that being transparent, even when things aren't going so great is really rewarding in the long run because we're human. And if you know, you, you can flip this conversation on its head and use it as a, uh, a way again, to, to help your business, when things turn around, right? When yeah. inflation starts to go back down. You, Absolutely. You, know, you can earn some more customers. Um, I'm not a big fan, like we're talking about this, uh, you know, separate fees and all this kind of oh, stuff. Well, but, I knew you, know, you weren't. <laughs> I, I can't stand it. We have it out here now. A couple of things that happen out here, like every restaurant you go to out here in the Bay Area, most of them add some kind of uh, lifestyle fee now. And, you know, I would just rather pay more instead of pointing it out to me that, you know, or the, uh, what do they call it? Living wage fee. Because it makes me feel like, well, you should just pay them more. Charge me more for the food. You know, charge me five bucks more or whatever it is. But sure. I, I get it. This is their thing. The other thing I've noticed out here is when you get the, the little credit card machine, when they bring it to you, 
the default, the choices for the tip are 25, 30, and 35%. And I, you know, maybe it's just, I have that old man disease that I talked about last week. <laughs> Is that, I'm like, what happened to 20%, you know? Uh, and, and so you have to click other and physically change it to yeah. and calculate it to make the 20. I was like, wow, that's good persuasion, I guess. But you know, it's great um, persuasion. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. 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 So, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah I don't I think, know how I would, I have gotten, especially since, uh, you know, the, the lockdown began and we started, you know, using a lot of like takeout and things like that. And I, as someone who has a, I talked about my side hustle earlier being this show, I have a side hustle to the side hustle, which is my music business, right? Which shut right. down, right? Like I wasn't yeah. playing any gigs and I, you know, even when I am playing gigs, I'm, I'm very aware of how difficult it is for someone in the service business and, and certainly the it entertainment is. business yes. to, to just make ends meet just in, in yep. general, right? Like it, it, it's, it's a normal thing. So I, I definitely, I have friends obviously that I work with in, in that environment. And so I'm very sensitive to that. And as soon as lockdown began, it was like, okay, well, we're going to start tipping more because a, a we're, you know, oh, yeah. we're not spending our money anywhere yes. else. So yes. I, 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 I this is all a preface to, I generally do tip these days, you know, in that 30 to 35% range, but I don't know how I'd feel about it if that was presented to me as the expectation. The default. Yeah. yeah. Like I like yeah, seeing the default as 15 and then like, oh, I'm, I'm going to well, do 30. This guy killed it. That's like, right. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel, I feel now, like is, that, is that a way to get people like me to to want to do 50? Maybe. When I, I was know. When I was at, wow. talk about persuasion. When we were in Nashville, we went to this club called the Bluebird, which uh, is somewhat infamous in in music circles and in Nashville circles. It's where a lot of song. It's a songwriter's performance. Uh, it's I mean, it, it it's called a, I called it a club, but it's really a cafe and it holds like 70 people. It's tiny. Hmm. Right. But this is where Taylor Swift got her start. Garth Brooks and got to start there. Like it, 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 it's it's legendary for a lot of good reasons. And we went to songwriters night there. And there was a host of songwriters night who, yes, was a, is a songwriter, but also is a stand up comedian. And so he was our host. He led us through, I think it was five or six different uh, people who came up and did like three songs each. And it and they have food and, and drink there so you could eat dinner or get snacks. And then, of course, um, you know, you can get drinks. And I think there was a, I don't know, a ten dollar minimum per person or something like that. So, you know, okay. tickets were free. Fine. No problem. So everybody had a bill at the end of the night. Right. This is how this works when there's a ten dollar minimum. You know, you you have a bill. And he said, uh, you know, we're they had just reopened. This was the beginning of August. They had opened okay. at some point in July. This is this year, 2021. So they had basically been shut down for wow. an entire year. Right. Oh, yeah. Boy. Well, this yeah. place is tiny. You couldn't be yeah, in there socially sure. distanced. That was like that was impossible. And so they finally had reopened and they were only open for limited nights. They certainly weren't open seven nights a week. I think they were only open three nights a week. We felt very fortunate to be able to go and experience this, you know, this place. And we had a great time. But this comedian in a very friendly, disarming, jovial way said, you know, uh, <laughs> open your wallet. <laughs> right. Well, but, but the way he said it was, yes, yeah. of course it was open your wallet. The way he said it was, uh, you, you know, and it's okay to tip a hundred percent. Uh, I like, that, I like it, that. right. You know, and he's, he's like, if you've never done that before, the feeling is amazing. And I highly recommend it. So if you've never oh, done it great. before, here's yeah. your opportunity, you know, and he even later in the evening referenced back to it. He's like, you know, this isn't the first night I've said that. I, I said that the other night and the wait staff came up to me at the end and they said, you know what? A couple of people did tip a hundred percent. We've never seen Good that persuasion. Before. Yeah, I, it was. Really cool. I mean, it was brilliant persuasion. Yep. It was all I could do to not tip a hundred percent. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> sure, that's great. Because it, that's great. you know he really set it up as this thing. Like, here's a great idea, and it was oh yeah, that's funny, right? So disarming. We're laughing about the idea. Then he's telling us a little more about the idea. Then later he's telling us other people have already done this, uh, right? So yeah, that's you could you yeah. could match them. And, and the implication was, or you could beat them. The yeah. choice is yours. That's right. That's good. <laughs> yeah, it That's was. Fa good. It was really, really. It was. I loved the way he walked us through it. It was like, man. This is brilliant. I love it. Yeah, if you're in the service business, that's that's fantastic. Yeah, I think that's a great yeah. idea. And, and you know, along the flip side, if you're selling products, you know, 
we're kind of a dis- discount or promotional driven society. You know, sure. you go to a website there, sign up for this and get 10% off. And bit, you know, maybe uh, you need to adjust that back down a bit. You know, one of the folks that we've had on this show, uh, you know, Corey Foskett from Tangle Free, that was one of our early interviews a few years ago. And we've had him on as a, or he came back again. We've played it as a best of. They typically do a 40% off sale right before this big season of their product line. And so this year, when I was talking to him, he's like, yeah, we're just going to do 30%, right? Still significant, but we're, you know, we're just kind of holding back a bit because all of our costs have gone up, you know? So think about ways to do that. But it, perhaps, yeah. All of these things are, know. are inflation. I love it. Of like, course. It, yeah. But, but not in the way that we think of inflation. And that's what I love about this. Yeah. 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 And then, you know, we've all seen the, the, the product sizes get smaller. I'm not a big fan of that, you know, leaving the price the same, but selling it a little different, but perhaps you can get creative on how you bundle things together, right? Can you do different combinations of your product or of your service? You know, can you, uh, get creative about the way, Hey, if you're going out to work at somebody's facility, can you combine some services and to try to generate more revenue from that same trip? Can you combine your products to try to get more revenue from that same order? It, it's it's definitely time to get uh, creative on how you pa- how you combine your products and services. I like I think it. It's a good way to do it. Yeah, uh, right, right. Oh, and then yeah. One thing I always talk about too to people is don't get stuck in the free shipping trap. You know, Amazon has, you know, convinced the world that everything should ship free, but it's really not free, right? Because you're paying 120 bucks a year or whatever it is now <laughs> yeah. uh, for Prime, which is fine. I think it's a good value. But as small business owners, people don't have, I mean, you just have to train your customers that that is not the normal expectation. Yeah. And, you know, to educate your customers about the true cost of your shipments uh, to them. Because people don't know. They just don't know that, especially now, in October, November, December, that all of the shipping carriers have added holiday surcharges to their shipments. So like for my business, a, one of my businesses that where we ship a product typically would be like a $14 shipment for a two pound item. And now it's up to 16 to 19, depending upon where you are in the United States. So talk to your people about that stuff. Talk to your customers. Smart. They, they will, they will understand. Um, we did a show recently about finding your primary customer. Now more than ever, it's important to know who is the most pr- profitable customer. What demographic is really the best for your business? And to perhaps let some of those other ones go that are more price sensitive, right? And maybe if you come out the other side of this thing, your business will be even stronger because you understand that, wow, you know, we were chasing this, trying to get this business and it turned out it really wasn't uh, the most important part or the most profitable. So, you know, who is generating the most revenue for you? The most profit, not just revenue. Mm, Think mm, about that. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It makes Uh, sense. Yeah. If if you've got a, well, certainly if you've got a difficult customer that is requiring an inordinate amount of your time, they may not actually be as profitable as you think they are. But Absolutely. the same holds true for a an entire product line or segment of your business. It it might bring in lots of cash, but take a look at what are we actually earning from this? And if it's not very much and you can't see another reason to keep it going, I mean, there's sometimes, well, it doesn't earn us much, but it, it pays for itself. And look at the advertising it gets yeah, for us, sure, right? Or, sure. or it's maybe even it's a loss leader in Other some way. Intrinsic. Yeah. It, what are, yeah. What's the actual value? And if you can't answer that question, jettison it, man. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I talked about this a little bit. I don't believe you should be selling, if you can avoid it, a single product with no add-on or a single service with no add-on. And I'm, you know, more warranties, more services. Hey, I'm out at your house repairing this. I can, we can do this while we're here at this discounted price. I mean, just incremental revenue can really help you during these times when things are getting more expensive. Um, Subscriptions, you know, think about it. What could you sell on a monthly basis that people would be willing to pay for, for whatever it is you do? Think about it. Get creative. Um, Adding things to your regular sales, really, really important. I I can, from being in the, uh, towards the end of, my technology uh, career in the phone business, which was a horrible business, phone repair business. Uh, it, it was good for a while. Good for a while. Good in the beginning, but it just became a commodity and everybody sure. began doing it as happens with most things. Yep. 
And it turned out, you know, by adding things to that repair, one of which was a screen protector, that became the most profitable part of that transaction because the pricing kept, you know, hammered down from competition and everything else. But we, we made exponentially more profit margin on the screen protector and the installation of it than we did for the repair. That's brilliant. So, yeah. oh, so you just got to yeah. think about it. Right. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, before you jettison that that product line or or you know segment yeah. of your business, look at what what could you add to it. Oh man, that's right. yeah, I love that's all good. these creative ways of of looking at inflation. I would never have thought of these as solutions to inflation, but you're also cre- I mean, the way to solve inflation is to inflate your own revenues, right? I mean, like, yeah. like the, the, and get more efficient, right? And get it. more on efficient the ba- on the back end, right. on the back end. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, I love this. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's so. great. And then, you know, increased labor costs, right? It, it's everything is more expensive getting people, especially if you have entry level positions, I think mm. very difficult right now. Um, but some of the things you can do instead of just paying more all the time is think about other ways to either attract or retain uh, those employees and maybe even increase revenue. Flexibility is a huge, huge uh, bonus and a benefit. If you've got, you know, entry level or just employees that have families, have kids that need to be able to take off and do whatever that flex time is. I mean, I, we really leaned into that over the years at, at our companies and, I just heard over and over again. It's like, oh, I, I'm I'm here because when my kid has soccer or my daughter's in a, a music recital or somebody gets sick, I can take off and go get them and I don't get penalized for that. That's right. right? Yeah. And it's yeah. huge. No, it, thing, we uh, we we've always embraced that here. Of course, at the at the foundation of it, we've had remote work, right? That's how yes. our companies have always been. As soon as lockdown hit, and certainly, you know, six to twelve months after that. Many companies were still in remote work, and a lot of them had said, we will never go back to the office, right? And so I thought that we had lost that differentiator for us, but it turns out not quite as much because at least not at the moment, so many, even those companies that are choosing to keep all their workers remote are not really set up in the same way to do it because we've been doing it for decades, right? Sure. It's, it's, yeah, it's it, part yeah. of our culture. Absolutely. It's, it, it's, it's awkward for that culture. It's still like, okay, well, you got to work at these hours and do this and do this. It's like, oh, you know, there's other ways that, and to your point, flexibility is the key. And that's yeah, what we constantly, and don't just sell this to new people you're hiring, by the way, sell it to the people that currently work for you. Oh, Whatever yeah, your sure. flexibility is, you know, loud and proud, shout it from the rooftops as often as you can, because they see it. Yeah, they pick up on. They see it, but they also they know what else is out there. They know that it is, you know, a a seller's market in in terms of uh, employment right now. You know, the the leverage is not with the employers at the moment. Uh, Correct. And, and so you want to do everything you can to retain the people that you've already trained to work at your company, unless they're bad people. Then obviously just oh, get yeah, rid of them. Different. It's fine. Yeah. But you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, and, and speaking of, of training, yeah. that's another benefit to offer training, career development, yeah. uh, talking about a career path with them can keep in increased loyalty of your uh, existing people and as well as hiring new hires. Like, look, we're going to help you. We're going to pay you, get these certifications or whatever. You can certainly have conditions upon those. Like, look, if we get you certified for X, we'd like you to stay for 12 months or whatever, you know, yeah. th- these kinds of trade-offs, but people like that. They, they want to know, okay, you know, Hey, I'm going to work here for a couple of years or whatever it is. I'm going to get some training and maybe I'll go on someplace. Maybe I won't, you know, maybe they'll do it from within. Uh, your own organization. And and lastly, this sounds very basic, but if you have people on site and as your people are returning to work and, and things, um, food, oh, like, yeah. I mean, let me say that again, food, uh, feeding people is one of the most powerful ways to create loyalty uh, for your team, your employees, your suppliers, your customers. <laughs> uh, they, they associate that good feeling of food. And, you know, we, are, we always had a good budget for lunches, breakfast, barbecues, you know, these kinds of things. And it really paid off because, uh, 
people gather around food. They make connections around food. Uh, they like it. They, you know, it's it, it just, I can't, I can't state the power of it, uh, how powerful it is. Interesting. Don't forget, don't forget food. Yeah, no, food, that makes, that's, yeah, that's good. And maybe be. remote, you have to do other things. Maybe you have to send everybody lunch and do a Zoom where we're all going to have lunch together. I, I don't know, be be creative, but yeah, we, con- connecting over food. We need to get better about that here. We've done it a few different ways, but you can send an Uber Eats card and that way, you know, people can have food delivered to their house and, and you can get your lunch together or, or do your you know, your, your, uh, Jackbox games online with each other, whatever it is. Yeah. Like there's lots of ways of, of doing this. Yeah, for sure. The yeah. better connected you are to your people, the less chance they're going to leave for just a little bit better offer. Yep. And the more chance they will help recruit other people to come work for you. It's true. It's very important. Yeah. Uh, true. last couple of points I have, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a product guy, so I've always been shipping things. Can, how can you lighten the load of your products, right? If you're shipping, oh. ha, are you maximizing your discounts for your carriers, right? I mean, you know, we used to get 60, 70% off of our UPS rates because we ship so much, but you have to remind them all the time <laughs> and keep revisiting those things, right? Yeah. Um, can you make your shipments lighter? One of the things I've noticed, I, I buy a ton of stuff from Amazon for one of our businesses and things are all coming in bags now instead of boxes, Right. Yeah. Little little brown bags instead of little brown boxes. I mean, can you can you put things in in bags, um, or or will carry will your carriers provide you with free packaging? You know, UPS, FedEx, and UPS do. So you need to be using that resource. You know, a buck a box uh, can really add up when you're shipping thousands of products. Right. Thousands yeah. of orders. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. And then yeah. Yeah. And then uh, last couple comments on on kind of related to our banking topic that we started the show with. Look at your cash reserves. I mean, I think things are going to get better, right? But we don't know. How long is this going to last? What's going to happen over the winter with COVID, right? Are things going to slow down again? I, you know, who knows? Who knows? What does yeah. what your cash look like? You know, be sure you have lines of credit in place. If you don't need it, just like we said at the beginning of the show, now's the time to get it. Um, think about that. You may need to bridge some of those short-term cash flow issues. You can still apply for the EDL, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Really? They, they have, yep, I didn't even realize the, that was still a... Th- I mean, I knew yeah, it was through a the thing, end of the but, year. Oh, and, okay. And they've increased the cap to $2 million for small business owners. One of the absolute easiest loans to get, and it's a 30-year loan at a very low interest rate. Um, much easier to get than a traditional uh, loan. And e- really, if you can show a significant drop in revenue... Over one of the quarters, I don't know exactly. I think you have to show it for at least one quarter. One quarter. Last, That's right. You know, one quarter. Yep. That is a is a great way to ca- uh, access that capital. Um, even if you just pay it back, you know, a year from now or six months from now, if you don't need it, it's a, it's a great way to do it. Yeah. Well, it's a nice safety net. Just to, yeah. be, like you said, we don't know what's going to happen this winter. Uh, right. So if your business was negatively affected by the initial lockdown, well. Yep. That you might, you, if you haven't changed things and another lockdown happens, you might need right. that extra capital. Yeah. Well, get, put the, get the, the EDL loan, put it in your bank account, then start talking to your banker. Say, Hey, I, I want to, I got the CIDL loan, but wouldn't you guys like to have that business? Oh, because yeah. then you can get a line of credit, which is only charging you interest when you tap it versus the loan, which is a term loan, which you're paying interest you're on paying all the time. Interest on the whole time. Yeah. So right. You, you can leverage that EIDL loan to get yourself into an equivalent line of credit and an additional line of credit with your bank because they want your business. And if you're paying 3% to the, um, you know, via the SBA, you, you, you know, get it through your, your normal banker. So I like it. I like it. That's my thoughts on inflation. I would love to hear your thoughts. Feedback at businessshow.co or you can go to facebook.com slash is it business show co? Boy, I don't You know what? Dave. It's easier. Just go to businessshow.co slash Facebook. That'll Perfect. redirect you there. Yeah. Yeah. Go absolutely. there, comment on our, on our Facebook page or the small business support group. Take part uh, in the conversation and Help us all learn some more. That's why we're here. That's why we're. That's why we do what we do. Absolutely, yeah. Make sure to go check out that David versus Goliath podcast. Now that you're finished with this one, and go check out uh, Shopify.com/sbs because that's where you're gonna. That's the engine you want to use. Trust us. Trust us. Hopefully, you already do trust us. Thanks for listening, folks. Keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next time. <laughs>